Hello. What I'm showing you a picture of is a picture I drew of my father. This is John Love. I still consider him to this day the best father anybody could have. Yeah, I'm bragging on my daddy. I'm going to share with you what a father my father is. And then I'm going to let you see how I see God through my father. Years ago, when I was in my 20s, I was partying high tag. I was doing my thing all up in the streets, playing the fool up one end down the other. Hey, okay. And I had come home from a one night stand. Hello. Y'all may be too young to remember what that term means, but anyway, look it up in the dictionary. And, um, My car had a flat. I come to my, I get dropped off, go to my car, and I noticed that uh, that one of the guys was sitting out on the back step. And he said, hey girl, I said, hey, what's happening? He said, do you know an old man that drives a blue falcon? I said, uh-huh. I said, that's my father. I said, what did he want? I'm, you know, I'm like getting, you know, get my little dander up, you know, getting defensive. You know, what does he want now? You know, I was young, smelling myself, thought I was all that bag of chips, didn't need my parents. You know how we go through that stage, okay? And this guy says, well, that old man just did you a favor. He asked if I knew how you were doing. I told him, yeah, I saw you last night. You were doing fine. And he asked if, uh, um, how long would it be before you got back? I told him, I didn't know. I didn't know where you went. So he went and took the old tire, that flat tire you had. He took that flat tire off your car and went and came back and put a new one on there. Girlfriend felt that small. My father loved me when I wasn't thinking about him. He cared for me when I was too caught up in me, myself, and I. My father loved me unconditionally. He knew I was out there being a fool. He knew I was out there showing my behind. And he still looked after my needs. I refused to ask them for money. I refused to go to the house and make a sandwich. I was, if I was going to be out on my own, I was going to be out on my own. I didn't want them to think I was using them because I really didn't want to be around them. I really didn't. Don't ask me why. I, was, I wasn't saved. I was stupid. Stuck on it too. Stuck. Glued to it. But I didn't go around them at all. And I made up my mind I wouldn't go see them until I wanted to see them and it wouldn't be because I needed anything. So, I said all that to say, God is constantly, constantly doing things for us. We don't even have a clue what he's doing on our behalf. He protects us from danger seen and unseen. He spares our lives. He gets us out of trouble. And we don't want to be bothered. We don't have time to hear all that Jesus talk. We don't want to hear nothing about no religion. Don't tell me what I can't do and what thou shalt not. Get out, get that stuff out of my face. Don't you stick no Bible in my face. What's wrong with you? And that's the attitude we have. And God, God is still loving us, still looking after us, sending angels, guardian angels, to keep us. I remember one time, I was hanging out with my buddy and she and I, she had a, a boyfriend that 
she and her boyfriend were at odds and I didn't have a boyfriend, so we were running the nightclubs trying to get some catch action. And one night we came home early because there wasn't nothing happening at the club. So we decided we wanted to get in some mischief. And we sat down and she said, hey, you want to lift some goodies tonight? I said, yeah. She grabbed her two big old fat pocketbooks. I mean, you could put a a, a, a great day in them. <laughs> <laughs> Those pocketbooks were big, okay? And uh, she and I went to her little neighborhood store. Uh, they were used to her. She was always there. And uh, anyway, so we go in there, and they knew I was with her, and they were cool with her because she was, you know, the lady that lived down the street. They knew her. I'm not going to call her name, so none of your business. But anyway... So we went to the store and we parked in the car, you know, we parked in the parking lot and we're both finishing our cigarettes. So uh, mine, I had a lot more to finish. So I told them I'm going to kick it in the car until, until I finish my cigarette and I'll be in in a minute. So I had my pocketbook that I got from her and she had, you know, my pocketbook was too small. We wanted to really load up. We were going to shoplift. That's what we were going to do, shoplift at a grocery store. So, just for fun. I worked for RTD. I didn't need the money at that time. We were clowning. So, she goes in the store, right? I'm sitting in the car. Everything goes quiet. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice. It's like coming up from within. Very mysterious. And it says this. Now you're going to go inside and you're going to shoplift everything you can. And when you head to that door, they're going to stop you. And the security guard is going to detain you while the manager calls the police. The police will come and they will handcuff you, take you to jail. And you will do time. I put my little cigarette out. Got out the car. Went in that store. Told my friend. I said, girl, I said, you do what you're going to do. But I tell you what I heard. And I'm not. I'm going to wait in the car. And she said, what did you hear? And I told her. I didn't know how, you know, what she thought about stuff like that. I wasn't saved. She wasn't saved, you know. But I told her what I heard. Blow by blow. And you will do time. I turned around and, and was heading to the car and heading out the store. And she said, wait a minute. Uh-uh. She said, if that's for you, she said, I'm not going to be no fool and take a chance. She said, I'm right behind you. And she said, now I'm going to buy me a soda. She bought herself a soda so it wouldn't look too suspicious. And we headed back in that car and went on. And neither one of us to this day had ever been arrested. God was watching after me and warning me while I was in the middle of my craziness. You know, we have no idea all the things God does to keep us from harm and to keep harm from us. When you get that check in your spirit, that that cramp in your gut, that I don't know feeling, you better stop. That may be all the warning you're going to get. Some of you women are mothers and you're allowing yourself to be arrested over some man's nonsense or over some stupid friend that you hang with. Some of you guys are out there riding in the cars with, with, with people doing stuff you know you're not even about just so they'll like you. And if the cops pull them over, you know where you're going. And you may have nothing to do with it. But look who you hang with. Some of you may be the culprits making other people fall because you're too chicken to do your crap by yourself. So you want to pull somebody else into your mess. But 
in the meantime, while all this stupidity is going on, guess who's watching over us? They're watching over every single one of you. God is watching. He's watching you and protecting you. But you know what? There comes a point where God says, my spirit will not always strive with you. And if he warns you and you go anyway, have it your way. I don't like what's going to happen. But you made your choice. Make the right choice, okay? Listen to the lover of your soul. God is the only one that is 100% for you. Even your family members have issues with you. God has the biggest issue, but he doesn't act on it. And that's why we take him for granted. Respect God's love for you, please. Listen. He's the best father you'll ever have. God bless you. I hope you make the right choice, the right decision.